So, um, hello everyone, and thank you for attending our session today. Uh, today, I'm going to walk you through a demo along with uh, my colleague Gregory. And in this session, we want to show you how to put together some of the topics and best practices you've heard about so far, especially with um, uh, the last session with Lorenzo. Uh, we're going to demonstrate a repository for a hypothetical data pipeline. However, instead of focusing on the details of Apache Beam transformations or like pipeline logic, instead, we're going to focus on the scaffolding components needed for a production-ready project. Meaning, we're going to focus on things like how to structure the pipeline to facilitate development and testing, how to do different levels of testing, like unit testing, transform integration testing, system integration testing, and how to build a continuous deployment pipeline that packages, test, and deploy your pipeline to the uh, respective environment. And finally, how to automate the infrastructure components needed by the pipeline. So for example, things like uh, BigQuery tables, uh, GCS, uh, GCS uh, buckets, you can extend them to include permissions and whatnot. So things like that. You could see um, the repository that we are demonstrating. Uh, you can see it as a kickstart repo or a template for you to extend with your own code or as a source for some useful code snippets and patterns uh, for your own project or for your existing project. And as you see here in the agenda, we are going to talk about multiple topics. So please bear with me if some points sound basic to you. The thing is we're trying to cater for a larger group of people with different levels of experience. And with that, uh, I, I have two screens here. So I'm going to be switching to um, uh, the demo screen that I have. So just a quick introduction, like within the Google Cloud Platform uh, project on GitHub, we have a repository for professional services. That's the team that me and uh, Gregory are working for. And it has a lot of useful examples and tools if you're interested in GCP, if you're working with GCP. Um, we publish here usually examples and tools out of our uh, customer engagements, our projects. You can find a lot of useful examples, code snippets, uh, tools that is or like tools or solution that is doing or solving a specific problem. And one of them is this data flow production ready uh, repository that we're presenting today. So with that, let me walk you through it a bit. So as I said, this is a hypothetical pipeline, more uh, specific, it's for machine learning uh, data pre-processing. And for that, we're expecting like this kind of input for the pipeline, there's a very simple input a uh, CSV file that is containing data for two sets of addresses. So we have four fields like source address, source city, target address, target city. And the point here or the goal of the pipeline is to calculate two um, similarity features between the two sets of addresses. So we want to calculate address similarity and city similarity based on some text uh, uh, distance methods or um, um, functions. So we're calculating the distance between source address, target address, source city, and target city. So let's have a look on how are we doing that um, from a high level perspective. So this pipeline that we're demonstrating is written in Python. We also have another version of Java, but we're not gonna be using it today. So if we go to Python here, and again, like the, just a quick note, Python and Java won't make a big difference as we speak because we're talking about the other components, as I said, like the uh, how to, to how, like just like logical ways of structuring the pipeline, how to do different kinds of testing, the continuous deployment pipeline, it has uh, less to do with the implementation language. So uh, within the Python module, we have the pipeline module itself. So in, in here we have some scripts to run tests and we have Docker files for the container image that we're going to be deploying. However, that's the main part of the repo or for the pipeline. And as you see, it's a traditional like Python uh, module. We have a setup file that is very important when it comes to packaging the um, pipeline code to run into Dataflow. We're going to be passing, passing it around in a lot of configurations. We have the main function, the, the main module, the entry point, and we have the pipeline code structured in Python modules like that, like the traditional Python that you can uh, see anywhere. So let's have a look on the main function or the main uh, the main method here. 
as you see, the first steps of, um, of this pipeline is that we're parsing a number of arguments, uh, three of them. We need the path for the input CSV, and we need two names or two specs for the query tables, one to store the results, and one to store the errors that we encounter during uh, processing of the data. So in this example, we also want to highlight some of um, the useful patterns that you can find in Apache B. For example, having um, multiple outputs, or what we call side outputs. Also want to demonstrate how to do, uh, use uh, side inputs and how to use counters. So I'm going to be showing that within the pipeline. So the first actual step of the pipeline is that we're reading this abbreviation file from uh, the local repository. And basically, what we want to do here is to apply some cleaning on the addresses that we have. So we want to map things like str to street, uh, rd to road, like this kind of abbreviations in addresses, av to avenue, so this kind of things. And we want to read or we want to have this mapping or dictionary. Basically, we're reading it here into a Python dictionary. And we want to make it available for all the processing nodes, all the data flow nodes, so that they can access it locally and do element by element uh, transformation or uh, cleaning. I'm going to show you how we're using it once we come to this point. And you can see for the pipeline itself, we start the beam pipeline like that, and we're structuring it into three main components following uh, the ETL abbreviation. So the first one, we're logically grouping all the transformations needed or the steps needed for extracting and parsing the data only. The second step, all the steps needed to clean and calculate and basically all, to do all the transformations that we have. And finally, we're loading the data, the results into the query table, like here. And we're also doing that for uh, the parsing errors that we uh, that happened during the pipeline. And one one way, or like one way to explain why we're doing it this uh, in this exact way is that this would facilitate our testing. So think, for example, this one, like this P transform that encapsulates all the processing, uh, all the core processing logic of the pipeline could be tested in isolation. And we can automate this testing using static inputs. Like I don't need to care about reading from uh, CSVs, parsing, GCS, or BigQuery. I don't care about that. I just need to focus on testing the uh, core transformations of the pipeline using static input. And if we're not doing it this way, it would be hard to do so. Like imagine if we have one pipeline that contains all the steps under each other, like read, do this part, do, or like uh, do function, uh, apply these transformations and write. It would be hard for us to isolate steps in between and do the proper unit testing or integration testing on that. So let's have a quick look on what's happening in the extract uh, transform. In this one, uh, I'm going to show you like two main um, patterns with Apache Beam. So first of all, you understand, like I think by now you know the difference between a P transform and a do function. Uh, basically, a P transform is a logical grouping of a set of other steps like do functions, reading from files or from databases, and so on. So in this one, we're reading, we're using Beam IO to read from uh, the CSV file that we just have. We're doing like a quick reshuffle just for performance reasons. In case of reading big files, we need to shuffle them into uh, smaller components. And then we're applying the um, parsing logic via a do function. So here we're applying beam.pardo, and we have a do function, parsesv, uh, that is doing something a bit interesting here. It has, like it's using this with outputs method. And basically, what does that mean? means that this do function is returning multiple outputs. So this do function will return multiple, like an array of P collections or a dictionary of P collections and records and errors. And then later on, like in the next step, we can access them or like index them separately. So you can see that we're extracting uh, the, um, the records only by indexing the records and errors uh, uh, array with this name, the correct output tag, and the same thing for the errors. So let's have a quick look on the do function itself and how it's creating these multiple outputs, or like this beam pattern, the side 
um, five outputs. So this one, this do function, as you see, uh, demonstrate two, two things. First of all, we want to have some counters. So these counters can help us to base, or like use metrics in general. And one way or one instance of metrics are counters. So uh, in this one, we want to count the number of input triggers, the number of the correct triggers that we could parse, uh, we could parse, and the number of uh, rejected records. All these kind of counters would be available to you in the data flow UI once you deploy the pipeline and it's running. And it's very useful when you have streaming pipelines, for example, because while the um, job is running, you can see these kind of counters and take actions. Or uh, what is even better is that these counters or these metrics are being written to uh, automatically to a stack driver. It's being collected and written to stack driver, where you can automate uh, more um, uh, custom dashboards or alerting rules whenever the number of rejected records reach uh, some limit, like do something, like send this pop sub message that automates some other workflow, whatever you can think about. Counters here in, in the process function itself that is processing element by element. We're checking, uh, we do some simple checks. We want to ignore the header file, and otherwise, we um, parse the line itself simply by tokenizing it based on the um, separator. Uh, in the case, we parse the record correctly, we increment the counter for um, correct records. And if you see here, Whenever we're just processing an element or start processing an element, we're increasing or we're incrementing the uh, counter for uh, input records. And whenever we have an output, we increment the counter for rejected. Multiple outputs. So basically, we are returning or like yielding two, um, two constructs called tagged outputs. So think about them as P collections. A like a named P collection in one way or another. So we're creating in this one, in this, in this path, we're creating a tag output of this name, the static name, and we're including the record, uh, the record that we just correctly processed in here. And output uh, for the errors, we're doing another tag output like this, with this name and this uh, payload or with this record. So basically, in this case, we want to create a new kind of record or like a simple tuple dictionary that has the error message and the row line that caused the, the failure or this error. So let's go back to <clears throat> the P transform itself. Uh, that's what you see like with outputs returns multiple um, tagged outputs and that's how we're using them or how that's how we're extracting them and returning them to the main function. And that's why basically here we have two P collections. So it's easy with the parsing errors. We directly write it to a uh, BigQuery like that using the option or the configuration that the parameter that we got from the user, like the error, um, we're writing into the errors BQ table. The interesting part happens with the parsed records. So in here you can see that we start with the parse records, the P, the P collection, and we're applying to it the second uh, P transform, the pre-processing transform. So you can see in the pre-processing transform, here it takes the abbreviation dictionary, the one that we read in here. And that's basically how we do the side input, uh, or like later on, like this would be passed to a do function, and that's how we do the side input pattern. So let's have a quick look again on what's happening here. So this is another P transform the, that encapsulates all the transformation logic or the core transformation logic of the pipeline. And it basically does two, uh, two, two main steps. The first one is that we clean and transform the data that we have while applying the abbreviation mapping that we talked about, this one. And the second one is to calculate the similarity features given the, the, the parse clean P collection or the parse clean input that we have. We calculate the similarity features, which are the output to the pipeline. 
quickly, I just want to show you here how we do the, um, the site inputs. So if you remember, like the this is a do function, and in every do function, there is a process method that is processing an element by element. However, if you want to extend that, and that's like pretty straightforward in Python, especially, if you want to extend it so that it accepts any other uh, input, you can just add it as it is here. So this is the abbreviation. It's a Python dictionary. You don't need to pass it as a P collection or any in any in any kind of wrapper. Just a dictionary, and then the Beam SDK would take care of um, spreading it or like um, sending it to the um, data flow worker nodes. So again, as I said, like we're not focusing that much on what's happening in the pipeline. I just want to show you some uh, high-level patterns and why are we structuring the pipeline in this way. And as I said, this is basically to facilitate how we're doing um, testing or several layers of testing. So with that, let's have a, a uh, let's have a look on the different kinds of testing that we're talking about and how are we applying them in Apache in, in, in Dataflow or Apache Beam. So probably you've seen this diagram uh, somewhere in the previous sessions or the next sessions, but uh, yeah, this laser. So as you see, like we have different compo different uh, layers within the pipeline that we have. So we start with the do functions, like the let's say the atomic unit of transformations in Apache Beam. We have some other uh, Python, like straightforward Python utility functions as well that we want to unit test. So for these ones, we're doing unit tests in isolation without reading from input data sets or writing, just with static input. And then if we combine some do functions together into a p-transform, like we did with the transformation uh, p-transform that I just showed you, this could be either a composite transform unit test or uh, what we call like a transform integration test. So it depends on how many um, P transforms you're putting under test. Anyways, the important point here is that for this level of testing and this level of testing, we want to automate them without, we want to automate them in isolation. We don't want to read from the input or from the output. We just want to use static data and have an, a, a static output compare them and keep repeating this every time we have a build, every time we're deploying the pipeline to uh, our environment. The last kind of testing is either like system integration test or end-to-end -end test, like this one. And as you can see, this one will not only test the core transformations or the functions within the pipeline, it also tests out the deployment of the pipeline. So what if we build a data flow template as we're going to be doing? And in the unit test, we're just unit testing the transformations. But after deploying the pipeline, something goes wrong. Maybe I had a problem with uh, the Docker image that I'm using, and the, and the data flow job is not triggering. So this kind of system integration test is, is very important, and we can do it in, in different scopes or different ways. So for example, uh, we could read like sample static input as part of our continuous deployment pipeline. We stage it somewhere, like on, on in CSV, you can stage it on a GCS bucket and uh, write the data to some uh, staging or like uh, testing BigQuery uh, results and just do a smoke test. Like, are we having the expected number of records in the expected tables or not? Or we can run it in to end full data set and test things like uh, performance metrics and, and things like that. So these are the different kind of levels of testing that we're talking about. And I want to go back to the code and show you how are we doing that within the pipeline. Mm. So Python, we have the testing module. So the first one is very straightforward. Uh, just as an example, we have a utility function that is mapping abbreviations, the one that is taking things like str, converting it to street, and so on and so forth. And this is basically a straightforward Python unit test. There's nothing about Beam in here. But we should, like in a production uh, data flow pipeline, we should also be testing these kind of things. 
So here we're having the abbreviations. We are applying these abbreviations. We have the expected uh, results, and we're doing an assertion. So basically, we're going to do the same thing, but using some Beam, Apache Beam uh, SDK uh, methods that could be useful for that. So if we go back to tests, let's start with the parse CSV. If you remember, this one was a do function. So we create a unit test case, um, like this case as this one. We're testing this, uh, this do function, only the do function. And if you remember, this is the do function that is reading the input and returning two outputs. I wanna show you how do we test like this kind of two outputs or uh, the side outputs pattern. Uh, we basically create um, some input um, accepted records. So this one is, as, this line should be parsed by the pipeline. This one should be rejected because it's missing the CT attribute. We combine them together into input data, like accepted records and rejected records. And we have the same for expected results, one for the ex expected successful results, which is basically parsed into a record, not just a line like that, and the expected rejected um, entry, uh, including the error, uh, the error message that you have and the rejected uh, line itself. How do you do unit testing then? Um, the Apache Beam SDK contains this test pipeline class that we could use, so we instantiate a, a pipeline. And we start by creating, I think this is like might be the most important part of the unit test, the create function. So instead of reading from external sources like PubSub, GCS, BigQuery, whatever that is, you can create a P collection out of some static input. So in this case, we have the, the static input and we're creating it, um, or we're injecting it into the pipeline using the create function. And then to test the do function, we're just applying it in this test pipeline like this, the same way we're using it in the uh, pipeline itself. So we have this part do, we're applying this do function, and it's also using the with outputs method, the same as the pipeline, returning two outputs. So we have the, uh, <clears throat> the first output is the, the first tag output. You can access it via its name, correct output tag, or like the value behind this, uh, this tag. And the same thing for uh, the wrong one. And you're doing basically the same thing as the Python unit test. We're doing assertions. We assert that this P collection is equal to this P collection. And we have both of them. So that was how to unit test a do function. Let's have a look on how to do that for a P transform. So Unit testing a p-transform in the way that we designed or um, structured the pipeline is is what we the, that's what I want to highlight here. So again, we have all the transformations or the core core pipeline transformations included in one p-transform. Of course, it depends on the pipeline size. If it's too complicated, you can split into multiple, uh, let's say, like major steps. But in this way, you can put the core transformation under test without the need of reading data from external sources or writing it to other external sources. So in this one, we're creating um, the input data as um, like an array of uh, records. And in this case, we only have one record. We have the expected output. And notice that in the expected output here, we have the similarity functions already calculated. The address similarity is zero because they are completely different, like street one and road one. But the similarity between cities, the city one and city one is the same. So we're expecting zero and one. We start the testing pipeline like that. In this case, since we tested, or like just to make it simpler here, we, we're not testing the mapping function. We should be doing that separately. But also like in this one, if you want to apply mapping, you can create the abbreviation dictionary in here. And uh, same thing, same pattern. We create the P collection, the input P collection using the create function with the static data. And then in the pipeline, we uh, apply the P transform, giving it this or passing it this abbreviation function. 
And as we've seen before, like we are doing an assertion that the output P collection, this one is equal to the expected output, and that's it. So this is about the basically how to test the do functions and how to test the uh, transform integration, uh, the transform integration test or the composite transform unit test. Uh, testing the P transform, like one P transform or multiple P transforms, if the same way I'm being. What about the system integration test? So for this, um, we need to have like some sort of a script because it's not being executed locally or like within the continuous deployment pipeline. It's being executed externally on the deployed um, or like on your environment, on GCP, for example. So if we go to the root repo, the root folder, we have this integration test. You can automate it with a bash script uh, with Python. Currently, we're using bash, we want, but we want to port it to Python to be more uh, like easy, easily readable for more people. And going quickly to the logic of this, uh, the first step is that we're preparing some GCP test resources, so we're creating a GCS bucket for the integration test, uh, for the system integration testing. We're creating some uh, BQ data set, a uh, couple of tables using the schema that we're all storing in um, the BigQuery JSON schema that we're storing within the repository. So we're creating a results table and errors table. And then we, second step here would be to invoke or to run the flex template or the job template that we already deployed in a previous step. The regular is going to talk about this part. Uh, we're executing it on GCP, passing it the parameters that we just created, like the integ system integration test parameters. And after it starts running, we need to loop on it, like loop every 60 seconds. We go and check, is the job still running? Is it still running? Is it still running? And we either have a, a failed job status and then the integration test fails because the job had an error, or it's successful. If it's successful, we move to the last part of the system integration test, which is checking the results and the error tables on BigQuery. So for this, we, we created the simple uh, query. We, since we created the input to this uh, integration test, we know the content of the file. So in this simple example, we know that we go, we, we're expecting two records to be inserted in the uh, successful results table and one in the, um, in the error table. And we're trying to generate a query that returns only true or false based on, on some binary flag. So, we're checking if the first table is, has two, true or false, if the second table has uh, one record, true or false, and then we're using an and in between them, just like a, just any way to return either the query has succeeded or like the, uh, this uh, system integration checking query has uh, successfully ran or not. If it runs correctly, we uh, terminate the system integration test. Everything is okay. We can move forward. If not, it would fail. And by by turn, it will fail. For example, the continuous deployment pipeline that is actually invoking this uh, script every time we're doing a uh, commit or every time we're deploying to an environment. So with that. Um, we talked about the pipeline structure, we talked about testing. The last thing that I wanna quickly talk about is the data flow templates. So we mentioned that uh, at one point, we're gonna, of course, we need to deploy this pipeline. Uh, and there are like multiple ways of running pipelines and data flow. Let's explain them very quickly here. So the first one is that like you do like um, on-demand uh, run commands. So you're a developer, you have your local environment, you have your code. Every time you submit a job to the data flow uh, runner or the data flow service, you're basically doing two steps in one go. So the data flow service would stage your code dependencies in a GCS bucket. It will start reading from it and run the, your pipeline on data flow. Every time you want to run this job, you have you need to have access to uh, 
like the local environment, the pipeline code, dependencies, and so on. But if, as a developer, I want to deploy the template once or deploy the job once and let other users run it as well. In this case, we need to separate between staging the pipeline and executing the pipeline. So that's where we use uh, templates. And we have two different kinds of templates, classic templates and flex templates. And the only difference is how do they store the code and dependencies. So <clears throat> for classic templates, whenever the developer initiates a like, template request, like create template request, we create a template file in GCS containing some metadata description about the pipeline, the kind of parameters that is expecting. And where you have staged the code and dependencies. And whenever a user is submitting a run request for a template, they are just referencing it, referencing the template file that is on GCS. The request is executed by Dataflow. And by turn, Dataflow knows where to pick the code and dependencies and run your pipeline. Flex template is exactly the same way, except for how instead of um, packaging your um, or staging your code and dependencies on a GC GCS uh, bucket, you're actually building a container image that is also being referenced by a template file so that if a user wants to run this uh, template, they can pass it to Dataflow and reference uh, the template file in GCS. How do we quickly, so in this, uh, in this example, we are using Flex template or in our repo we're using Flex template. And in order to do that, we need to have uh, a Docker file. So within Python, we have a Docker file that explains, a very simple one that explains how to package the pipeline code that we have. So we're starting the image from this Python 3 template for data for templates, like from the base. We are copying the uh, pipeline code. Uh, I think that the most important step here is that we are installing all the requirements, all the Python dependencies that we have in the repository. We're installing it using the pip on um, the image that we have. So for example, this uh, text distance Python library, we have it, we're having it in here. And finally, we set this environment variable, Python file, the main entry for our pipeline code so that whenever Dataflow is invoking this uh, template or this job, it knows where to start the pipeline. And with that, I'll hand it over to Gregory, who's going to talk about how to put all these steps together into a continuous deployment pipeline and how to automate the infrastructure components as well. Gregory, it's all yours now. Uh, thank you very much, Karim. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Gregory. and. In this project, I was responsible for the CI CD automation part. Uh, so the first step we had to do is to define the steps and their, their order to be, to be able to define the CI CD pipeline. Uh, so generally, to be able to execute the CI CD pipeline, we have to ex execute two steps. One is running the unit tests. Second is running the integration tests. Running the unit test is quite easy. We just execute the uh, shell script uh, Karim showed to us. For running the integration tests, we already have to deploy the template because integration tests would be running against the template. In this case, uh, to deploy the template, you have to build the Docker file. You have to push the uh, Docker image to the registry, and we have to uh, trigger the uh, gcloud CLI command to build the template. The next step, so after that, as a last step, you can execute the uh, shell script, which is running the integration tests. So the next step you have to do is to, to choose the CI CD uh, tool. So it could be Jenkins, it could be GitLab, CI CD, generally could be anything. In this case, we decided to use Cloud Build. Uh, first of all, it's a, a GCP project. And second, it is a managed product project, which uh, saves us from a lot of quite complicated questions like how to organize the access to the GCP project, how to store the credentials, how to update the plugins, how to manage the connections, and all other problems which I believe might be a good uh, good point for a long talk on their own. So 
generally you would expect uh, the cloud uh, cloud build YAML manifest uh, containing the cloud build steps to be in the uh, root of the repository. In this case, we, we have two different pipelines, one Java, one Python. And we believe that uh, Java and Python pipelines could have different steps for the CI CD pipeline. So our cloud build uh, YAML file for the Python pipeline is located in the Python uh, folder, cloud build. So based on what uh, I told uh, regarding the steps which has to be executed, uh, you can see those five steps here. The first one is unit testing. So it just invokes the shell script uh, Karim showed us. Second is building the container. So it calls the uh, Docker build command with a, a batch of parameters. Third one is push, so pushing the resulting build to the uh, GCR repository uh, registry. Uh, next, executing the uh, data flow flex, build, uh, flex template build command, which will uh, generate the template and put it on a bucket. And last, running the integration test. So another shell script, five steps. Uh, we believe to make this script generic, uh, some of the uh, parameters, uh, some, some of the variables have to be parameterized. So like project ID or image name or image tag. Some of them uh, should be probably set once. That's why in the substitution block, they have the default values. Others should be defined on the runtime. Let's say like the image tag, uh, this parameter has to be probably uh, defined on each run based on your versioning uh, strategy. Might be you're going to be using the uh, git uh, commit hash. Maybe you have some uh, type of a semantic versioning where you increase your version based on the uh, commit message. Uh, nevertheless, uh, you can pass these parameters either with the uh, cloud build command or define them in the defaults. How this pipeline can work. So let me demonstrate it. This is a gcloud builds submit command. Uh, so generally, if you execute this command without the parameters, it's going to search for the gcloud. Uh, oh, sorry, it's going to search for the cloud build YAML file in the root folder. But in this case, as we have a separate cloud build YAML file for both uh, pipelines, we have to trigger the one from the proper directory, so from Python. Uh, when I execute this cloud build command, it's going to trigger the cloud build, and you can see this cloud build process already running in my project. So I have to refer the page, and you see the exactly same pipeline currently running. Currently running here. It's all the steps. The whole pipeline will take uh, about 12 minutes to run. So I won't wait here until the end of this pipeline and we'll keep showing you things we did to automate this, uh, this CI CD pipeline. So I was able to execute this pipeline manually. But of course, you're not going to do it uh, in your every everyday development life. So probably you would prefer having something like uh, CI CD pipeline being triggered on push event. So let me configure the cloud build to, to run on push. For this, I will use the cloud build trigger. I choose a name to, for this trigger. And I want to execute this pipeline on any pull request. So technically, you can have different uh, branching strategy in your Git repository. In this case, uh, I will use the pull request, but you could use something like push the branch or push a new tag, whatever you choose here. Uh, the repository is the one I'm storing code at, and I want to execute it on any branch. Uh, the rest is, let me get to check, not relevant. Uh, the most important thing is a cloud build file. So in this case, I need to define the cloud build file again, and it's going to be the file from the Python. So now I create a trigger, which is listening to a, a pull, pull request. Whenever pull request is being uh, created, it's going to trigger the pipeline. 
So currently we have one cloud build running. Let me create a pull request so that you will see that the pipeline is going to be triggered the second time. Uh, So I switch to my current branch. It's going to be test feature tool. And I create the pull request. So I'm going to pull it back to my repository. And just give it a second. Yeah. So I pull from the test feature branch tool to the master branch. And then I click create pull request. So what's going to happen now? We're going to get a second uh, cloud build. Uh, yeah, exactly. Now it's running. So that's absolutely the same pipeline now being triggered not manually from the CLI, but automatically from the uh, cloud build uh, trigger on each uh, pull request. What is interesting here is that I can get back the uh, pull. Uh, I, can, I can get back in my uh, pull request the result of the CI-CD process. So you can see the data flow trigger, this one is currently running, and it has a yellow sign, so which means that we are still waiting for the result here. Whenever this one going to succeed, which will take another 12 minutes, we will get a green sign here like that, saying that the pipeline is being run, and we are sure that whatever changes have been pushed to this branch, uh, they don't break something, and they are ready to be uh, pushed into the master branch. Uh, and technically, if you want, we can also go to the settings and disable uh, merge of the branch into master and list all the requirements here are being fulfilled. So all the checks we need are being run. So the whole demonstration here, as I told, will take another 12 minutes. So maybe we will be able to see the result, result of it, or otherwise you'll have to trust me that it works. So meanwhile, I will walk you through another interesting topic. So this was a CI CD pipeline for the uh, data flow pipeline itself. But generally, each data flow pipeline would need additional pieces of GCP infrastructure, like buckets, like uh, BigQuery tables, maybe something different. Those things generally should be also automated. Why? Because you, whenever you push changes to your code, which uh, relies on some uh, parts of infrastructure already existing, uh, you should should have a guarantee that those those things are already there. So the current industry standard for the uh, infrastructure as code is terrible. In this case, in the repository, if you please switch here, in the repository, we have a Terraform folder describing the uh, BigQuery tables, which are used uh, by our data flow pipeline. This thing is here. So just a second there. Yeah, those the, those tables are being defined here in the schema folder. This is a JSON file containing the schema for the data flow, uh, for the BigQuery uh, tables. Now, what if you want to automate creation of those tables or maybe even uh, support it with a CI CD pipeline? To do that, we added another cloud build YAML. Generally, we believe that the infrastructure code should be separated from the uh, data flow pipeline code and would be residing in a different repository. But for the sake of simplicity of this example, they are now in the same, they're located in the, in the same repository. But to keep them logically separated, we use two different cloud build YAML files. The, Terraform CI CD pipeline is also quite an interesting topic on its own. So in this implementation, we use the simplest approach, just run Terraform init, plan and apply. Generally, you would have way more complicated strategy here based on the branches. Maybe you will produce plans, store this, them somewhere on the buckets, compare them and so on. So just see it as the simplest uh, possible uh, implementation to show the general approach, how this will be uh, handled uh, with this uh, cloud build CI CD. So three steps. First is Terraform init, which is just calling the init command. Second is plan. Uh, and the third one is apply. We also pass uh, the variables here. So in this case, uh, the project ID 
is not being passed explicitly, but Cloud Build is able to fetch the project where, where it is running. So we don't need to have uh, we don't have to to, to tell what our project is. Uh, cloud uh, Cloud Run will uh, Cloud Build will decide it based on 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 the project. Now, if I will execute this pipeline from the CLI, how I did it with the previous, uh, how I did it with the previous CI/CD pipeline, Just give it a second. I will cancel the running one and run another one. We will see two additional tables being deployed. Uh, to our GCP project. Uh, so let me show you how it looks now. This is the BigQuery, and currently in the uh, in the project uh, test one, I don't have any any tables. Now, if I execute this pipeline, and it will take uh, about thirty seconds to run, you will see two additional tables being created in this uh, data set. Currently, it's running Terraform init. The next step is going to be Terraform plan. And you should already see the execution plan. Yeah, so it highlights that several tables are going to be created. And now it switches to Terraform apply. Uh, and the pipeline is finished. So if I update the page, I will be able to see uh, two tables being created exactly here. So uh, this is a Terraform production ready table uh, data set and ML prep rock errors and ML prep rock results. So you can see it from the uh, repository here. If I click on the schema folder, it's ML prep rock errors and ML prep rock results. If I will add additional file here, uh, I will get additional table uh, in the uh, data flow. Oh, sorry, in the BigQuery. Uh, technically, I can also automate this CI/CD pipeline with the trigger. So if I go and let's say create a trigger and say that it's going to be a data flow TF, uh, data flow TF, and I'm going to be executing pipeline pipeline this time on every push to a branch and the repository is going to be the same and uh, the branch is going to be the same uh, it's going to be any branch and I need a cloud build file and in this case I'm going to be using the uh, cloud build uh, TF file and that's all so in this case this trigger gonna execute this ICD pipeline on each uh, again on each push to the repository uh, and I can show you this example from here if i go to the uh, to the schema repository and create uh, additional schema file here and let me copy the content from any uh, any existing file let's say from this one and insert it here and then all i need to do is to save it let me call it just test and I save it. So what I will have to do now is pushing the changes. So I do git status. I see the changes in my file test JSON. So git add file name, git uh, commit its message. It's schema and I do git push and give me a second to copy the credentials. And now we should see the uh, CICD pipeline being executed from the history tab. And here we go. This one is, uh, nope, just give it another second. Nope, still not. Uh, let me quickly take a look here. So I pushed it to the test feature branch, and this is the curse of the real time examples. Whenever you try to execute it, something goes wrong. 
let me quickly check it from here. And let me quickly check it from the trigger. So I run it from the uh, feature test branch. Test feature tool. This one. Hmm. Yeah, and now I see my uh, my Terraform uh, CI/CD pipeline running. It will take another 30 seconds, and we should be able to see additional table being created uh, in the BigQuery. So currently, it's a plan step running. And we're going to be here. So I see the test table. So in this case, it created a test table based on the update I pushed back to the repository, which automates the uh, the infrastructure creation. And all I need to care about is uh, having my Terraform files being uh, in the proper place in the repository and pushing the updates to the Terraform file whenever I need additional part for the CI CD uh, pipeline. Uh, sorry, for the data flow pipeline. So with that, I believe. Uh, there was a story about the CI CD automation uh, for this data flow project.